Okay. All right, gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. We're, we're going to do our outrigger canoeing this morning tour. And before we do that, we're going to teach you guys a little bit of technique about paddling, all right? So you guys don't wear out easily. Now, this one right here, the flat part of the blade, the top, is going to be towards you. Now, when you're paddling, this bottom right motion, this one keeps the paddle straight. Yeah. Your power's up here. So you go straight and perpendicular. Try to keep it straight with your shoulders and then just paddle right through. These canoes are based on the original Plough and War canoe design. Well, right now we're paddling through the middle of the Rock Islands and apparently there's over 300 of them. And I must say, it's absolutely beautiful. Very nice. Nice, isn't it? Oh, yeah? breathtaking. Breathtaking. <laughs> Chances are we could see a really good, some big fish today because it's been really windy and rough outside so you can see some maybe some bumper head parrotfish, skipjacks, trevally swimming along this edge of the rock islands right here looking for food. These days the traditional outrigger canoes are made out of fiberglass to prevent ancient trees from being cut from the forests. Plough is certainly one of the world's top dive destinations. Bored of all these wrecks. Can we go to do some proper diving, please? This shipwreck right here is one of my favorites. Uh, it's called the Eero. Um, it doesn't have the Maru classification like other ships. You always hear something Maru, which means a merchant ship. This one was an oil tanker, and it was also sunk during the World War II era, uh, around 1946. This one sits upright, that's why I like it so much. And we can see, we can still get a feeling for what this ship might have looked like when it was underwater. Um, it has large king posts coming down from the uh, pilot house on down, as well as a nice big gun emplacement up at the front of the boat there, at, at the bow. There's also a gun at the stern as well, and along the way, many cargo holds and a lot of nice fish activity. This has, of course, 56 years of uh, marine life growing on it. So it has uh, clam and oyster shells, which have lived, died, fallen to the bottom, so it'll be big piles of shells will be laying at the base of these king posts, as well as some neat fish. Uh, one of my favorites is a uh, batfish. You know, they're flat, silver, or they also known as a uh, spade fish. Due to the Japanese occupation, the islands were the scene of some pretty intense fighting and bombing towards the end of World War II. On the nearby island of Peleliu, some 15,000 Japanese and American soldiers lost their lives during the fighting. Wrecks like this one serve as a ghostly reminder of what took place less than 60 years ago around these waters. Fortunately now, dive sites like Blue Corner, Nemelis Wall and German Channel have helped cement Palau's reputation as an all-round dive destination with wrecks, drop-offs and spectacular cold gardens. Absolutely fantastic. See a nice big wreck down there. I guess I went down to about 30 meters. Nice big gun on the front. I think I saw a few medium sized batfish. Visibility was good. Water temperature is nice. Yeah. I could come back here again, I think. Live here for the rest of my life. It'd be nice. Yeah. How you doing? You all right? rock islands hold within them many saltwater marine lakes. Perhaps the most incredible is the Jellyfish Lake. No trip to Palau would be complete without a trip here. You know, I think I might not go. I'm going in. <laughs> 
the El Nino phenomena decimated the jellyfish population here during the late 1990s, causing the lake to be closed for a while. But now, resident marine biologists reckon the population has rebounded and is safely around the 8 million mark. These species of jellyfish have been in the lake for so long that their self-defensive stings, along with any natural predators, have all but disappeared. Now, they spend their days drifting harmlessly about the lake, harvesting the sun's rays. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Absolutely millions and millions of jellyfish. Oh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've got to tell you though, I was quite scared before because I've been stung by jellyfish and it does burn. But here, jellyfish seem to be completely sting free, very friendly. Comes in all many different sizes. Quite tasty too. Oh, it's definitely worth a return trip, I think. The island of Palau is where the Yapis people originally came to quarry their precious stone money. Okay, it's from this area that the Yapis people used to actually create their stone money. Now, once they created the stone money, they used to have to drag it through the jungle down to the sea. There, using their very basic log rafts and wooden canoes, they'd have to do a very difficult and long 400 mile journey back to their home island of Yap. Now, it's this arduous journey and possibly the number of people that perished during it that gives the money its true value. Yeah, you'll pay me in stone money. <laughs> 